What is the one tool that every 3D artist literally can't create without? Computers. And not just any old computer. No, because 3D art calls for some high-end system requirements. If you slap bottom of the barrel parts onto your rig, you're gonna get bottom of the barrel results. Think about it, just like we continually seek to understand and master our various softwares, I think it's equally important to understand the hardware that makes all of this stuff possible. So this video is for every eager artist and even soon to be artists out there looking to step up their hobby or even career with a deeper understanding of how these things work. We'll be able to build, buy, or upgrade a rig with confidence. Now, I just had this incredible workstation sent to me by Puget, so be sure to stick around to the end to figure out how they can put together your dream rig just for you. Did you know there are eight main components you'll need for your 3D workstation? And this little thing right here is the head chef. It's called a processor or a CPU. Every single task on your PC is sent through your CPU. Now CPUs, they have cores and threads that determine how many workers the head chef has to help with these tasks and the clock speed determines how fast those workers are. But more on the details of all these parts later. Sticking with the kitchen metaphor, all the people and appliances in our kitchen are grounded to the floor or the motherboard. The motherboard simply acts as a central hub for every single piece of hardware on your computer to either connect to by power cables or direct connection. Now, since our head chef, the CPU, is running like 3.5 billion laps a second, he's gonna work up a little sweat, and that's what these bad boys are for. They're CPU coolers. It's gonna cool off your CPU on tough days when you're rendering, simulating, or just crunching numbers. It's literally your head chef's personal air conditioning assistant. Now, we got RAM. RAM, or random access memory, is another piece of hardware that directly connects to the motherboard, and it's essentially your easy to access inventory slots. RAM temporarily stores the data you're using close by to keep your work efficient. The more RAM you have, the more inventory slots you have. And if you don't have enough RAM, you'll essentially have to discard useful items or data in order to make room for the next most important thing. Also, keep in mind that this is temporary storage. When you restart your PC, this cache will be wiped. So storage is the opposite. It also stores files, but takes a bit longer to access them. And when I say longer, I mean maybe a handful of seconds, depending on which drive you're using. So there are three types of storage drives. The first and slowest is your standard hard drive. They rely on moving parts. Solid state drives are a bit faster. Uh, they have no moving parts, but the NVMe drives, now those connect directly to your motherboard and are the fastest choice for file storage. Also the most expensive. Your storage drives are basically the drawers, cabinets, and shelves in the kitchen versus counter space, which is kind of like RAM, that makes grabbing tools instant. Next up we have the power supply. Now the power supply is what provides electricity to all the parts inside our computer. Without the power supply, you have a chunky paperweight. Yeah, you already know what this looks like. It's a GP, it's a graphics card, all right? It might be one of the most important pieces of your 3D workstation, and unfortunately, it's likely the most expensive piece too especially in today's market. The GPU is essentially a specialized mini computer that does a number of things, mainly processing video feeds. It turns all the data and stuff that goes through your CPU and turns it into a visual thing that you're looking at on your monitor. The reason it's so important for us 3D artists is because it allows us to see what we're creating in real time. And the better your GPU, the more of your 3D art you can see at once. And finally, we have the case itself. It houses all of the hardware, of course, but also keeps things cool by ensuring everything has enough space to breathe. It even comes with little panels and windows for fans to keep things cool. Okay, so we talked about all the parts generally, but let's get into why one CPU is better than another, why one GPU is more expensive than another. A processor's performance is generally measured by three things, cores, threads, and clock speed. The more cores a processor has, the more tasks it can work on at the same time. CPU-based render engines like Arnold and V-Ray would render just about two times faster on a 32-core CPU versus a 16-core CPU. Each core is essentially a worker crunching away on the task at hand. Now, threads are essentially ways that the cores 
can multitask. The more threads you have, the more things your cores can do at once. A higher clock speed simply equates to more efficient workers. Now, GPU performance is measured by a lot of stuff, but the most important thing for me personally is VRAM. More video RAM means you can add more models, more simulations, more materials, more everything to your 3D scenes and view it all in real time. Running out of VRAM in the middle of a project is basically like running out of toilet paper. As far as tech specs go, Unreal Engine, Blender, and C4D each call for their individual VRAM minimums. But the more the better. The NVIDIA Quadro RTX 6000 has 24, and the A6000 has 48. This card alone has unlocked my ability to create larger scenes in 3D. Back in the day, I was working on a GTX 1070, and I think I got some good renders out with this 1070. You don't have to go all out right at the gates. Invest in yourself over time. Invest in your career over time. All right, so let's talk about storage. The main difference between our three hard drive options is really storage space. You know, a two terabyte SSD is gonna cost more than a 500 gigabyte SSD. So a great rule to live by is to install your operating system and programs on an SSD, while everything else lives on a basic hard drive. The idea is to speed up boot and launch times by reserving a faster drive for the important programs and your operating system. You can go a step further and reserve another SSD for cache data, or go a step further and take those two SSDs, upgrade them to NVMe drives, the fastest drives. Your current projects and most used files can go on SSDs and reserve everything else for the standard hard drives. So RAM, the main difference in price between two RAM sticks will basically be capacity. You have a two gigabyte stick or you have a 16 gigabyte stick. One's more expensive than the other. Do you have one 16 gig stick or do you have four of them? You're gonna spend more money on four, obviously. RAM is one of those pieces of hardware where more is usually better. You can go overboard with it. Your computer may not use all of it. So you would just have unused RAM sitting there, but it's better than not having enough RAM. Important note on the power supply. You wanna make sure that your power supply has enough wattage to power your entire computer. The difference between a cheap one and a good one is reliability. That's the first thing is reliability. You have to have a reliable power supply. As far as cases go, a crappy case will be cramped and will barely have any support for fans, all right? You wanna have a case that has room to breathe, that has enough airflow to cool your parts off. You don't want stuff to be sweating in these things. You want them to be running as cool as possible. But remember, specs are important, but I'd rather have a part that is 10% slower and not crash than a part that's 10% faster and blue screen my computer. It doesn't matter if you buy an overclocked GPU or a super cheap power supply. If your hardware isn't reliable, they will be headache on your rig, on your life. It'll just make things suck. You'll be wasting money. As 3D artists, we need a stable system, especially if your job counts on it. For those of you who would prefer to hire professionals like Puget to put together your dream rig, let me tell you how awesome it was to work with these guys. The first thing you'll do is talk with a professional about your specific needs. You tell them what programs you use, what kind of work you wanna do on your PC, and what your job revolves around. So for my rig, I told them I need to view complex 3D scenes in real time and render those scenes with as little wait time as possible. I need to process photo scans quickly. I need to quickly edit high-res photos as well as 6K footage without lag. And with that, they put together a rig based on my needs. Gave me daily updates on its build progress and once completed, shipped it out next day. It came with a folder of booting instructions instructions, different info on my rig, a direct number to their tech support service, and they even threw in a bunch of spare cables I might need in the future. I couldn't recommend it more to people who need a trusted team of professionals to build them a reliable rig. So if you're thinking of going this route, click the link below and chat with a Puget professional to see if a custom rig makes sense for you. Also in the description, I included a bare bones 3D workstation to keep the price as low as possible. I know this can get super pricey for y'all and I just want to help you get as much information on this stuff as possible so that you can get creating better stuff as fast as possible. If you learned something new, consider subscribing for more educational deep dive content for filmmakers and 3D artists and leave a comment below if you have any questions. Best of luck to you on your creative journeys and I'll see y'all soon. Peace.